And then lastly, we are at the pyrometer. Now, pyrometer as a thermometer, pyrometers, we are saying that this, this is a thermometer used to measure very high temperatures by using the radiation that the body emits. Okay? And it uses wavelength of that radiation as the thermometric property. That is a thermocouple. A thermocouple, I mean, I mean, not a thermocouple point of correction, it is a pyrometer. Now, a pyrometer, like those thermometers which we use out there for screening, for getting temperatures, those thermometers, we call them infrared pyrometer. Okay? But there are some also who, are, who, who, who can also say the electronic what? Thermometer. Okay? So those thermometers there, they are known as pyrometers in simple terms. Now, when we come here, you will find that these thermometers here, or which are known as pyrometers, for them, they just based on the on the incident radiation, the radiation which is coming from from the that hot body. Like if it is to measure the body temperature, then it has to depend on the wavelength of the radiation which is coming from your body. Okay, and that radiation it is known as infrared what radiation. So that's why that that pyrometer or that thermometer we call it the infrared pyrometer okay so for it to just it's not supposed to be in contact with your skin in order to get your body temperature like the way you see with a clinical art thermometer with a pyrometer it is used to measure very high temperatures like there you are going to see we can use a pyrometer to get the temperature of the sun to get the approximate temperature of the sun using a pyrometer so you will see there and because for it it just places on the radiation which is that body is what emitting so you have to take note that with a pyrometer it uses wavelength of a radiation as the thermometric key property okay now after knowing how I mean what a pyrometer is meant for and which is thermometric property it uses, then we can just look at the two types of what of pyrometers. Okay, we have two major types of pyrometers. There's that pyrometer which uses in optical instruments like the lens, okay, like the filament bulb. But there are those ones which do not use that. So we want to see the character, I mean the types of pyrometers and the two types we have there. The first one is known as the optical pyrometer. Now we are going to see how an optical pyrometer looks like and how it works. Then the second one, it is the total radiation pyrometer. Okay, total radiation pyrometer. Also, we are going to see how it looks like. So, let us just go to the optical pyrometer and how it looks like. So, any optical pyrometer on your screen, you will be able to see. I think in your books there, you were able to come up with this structure here of an optical pyrometer. So with an optical pyrometer, this is its setup, and you find that how does it? Why is it known as an optical pyrometer? Because it uses optical instruments like this convex lens. It is an optical instrument. This tungsten filament. Okay. Then also we have the red filter here. This is also an optical instrument. Now, like, you'll be able to a red filter when we talk about this. This is when you go to colors in light, okay? Colors, filters. You can, you can be able to recall about that. Then also, this side, we have the eyepiece. The eyepiece is nearer to the eye. 
So someone who is observing, suppose you observe through these eyepiece, okay? Where you know, the other side, there is the source of what? Heat. So we may be in need of getting the temperature of this heat what? Source. So if we want to get a temperature of this heat source, then our, our pyrometer should be arranged like that. So you find that these parameters inside there, that is simply how it is arranged, okay? But in, in, you'll find that at one point, it, it just looks like, like the way you see a CRO, okay? This cathode ray oscilloscope. That one, when you look at its arrangement of the internal components and the, in reality, so you find that they just, eh, there is a way the internal arrangements just differ with its outer what? Outer um, housing. So you find that this is simply the arrangement of the optical pyrometer. Now, we have, like the I said, we have the source of heat on the upper side here then followed by the convex lens, then the ready filter. Now, between the convex lens and the ready filter, there is the digestion what? Filament. Okay? Now, this digestion filament, it is like a balloon. It is a balloon, but it uses a filament coil or wire. So, this, this filament, it should, be, it should be able to give out light with the help of that, that, that lower circuit. Because with the lower circuit, you can have, we have the ammeter there, we have the, our dry cell, then we have the roll start. Now this roll start here, its role will be to adjust the brightness, the brightness of, the, of this digestion what? filament. If we want it to give much, if it is to give out Okay, much, much of light, you find that we have to adjust just the road start. If you are to decrease on the amount of light given by that uh, filament, again, we have to adjust the what? The road start, okay? Then the red filter also plays a certain role, the way I will see when I'm explaining. And then I piece, of course, that's just simply for what? For observing. Now, how does it work and how this is simply its structure, but the question is, how does it work? Now, when you are describing, of course, they will give you a question like, describe the structure and operation of an optical pyrometer. So when you are describing, you have to always begin with the structure, how it looks like, okay? Then after that, you can be able to look at now, how does it work, okay? So you find that, like, if you are to measure the temperature of this hot body, then what you're supposed to say, like, we can just go to the first step, how an optical pyrometer works. We are saying the body whose temperature is to be found is focused by the lens such that its image is in the plane of the filament, okay? Let me count this diagram. We want to get the approximate temperature of this what? Hot body. Now, this convex lens is supposed to focus that beam, that radiation, that incident radiation coming from the what? from this hot source. That's why you can even see the pointer, the arrows, okay? So this convex lens, it focuses, it focuses that incident radiation from the hot what? Source of heat. I mean, from that source of heat. Now, it must focus it such that it is coinciding or it is lying at the same point so within the filament, what? Within the adjacent filament, okay? That's why you can be able to see here that this is your, ta your focal point of this convex, what? Lens, where these two rays are meeting. So they should meet at where the filament is. So when you are drawing your diagram, please, 
make sure you don't just draw this filament anyhow. You make sure it is exactly at where this radiation is what? Meeting. Okay? Now, after that, that radiation which is coming from the convex lens, it is going to land on this red filter. Now, this red filter is supposed to remove, it's supposed to, to filter out any infrared radiation carried by what? By this incoming radiation, which is coming from the convex what? lens. So the red filter, its role is to simply eliminate the heat carried by the what? By the radiation. And that heat, that heat is simply the infrared what? Radiation. That's why we are, we are using a red filter. Now when you just say filter, now there you are wrong. You are supposed to specify, okay? At least maybe you can say heat filter, but, at, but it is the best to say red what? Filter. Why? Because it is going to play a role of eliminating or filtering out the red or the infrared what? radiation. So that before it, this radiation reaches the eyepiece, the eyepiece won't be damaged by that incoming what? radiation. So the red filter just protects the eyepiece from being damaged by, the, by the, this hot what? This hot radiation coming from the hot source like that. So, and then after that, I, I, I think I've shown you the role played by the convex lens. It is just supposed to focus the incident radiation onto the filament, where the filament is. The red filter, it, is, it plays a role of filtering out the incoming red, I mean the infrared what? radiation, which is carried by the incoming radiation, like that. So, now, how the point is, how are you able to come up with the temperature of this hot source or this source of what? Heat. What you are supposed to do, keeping your eye at the eyepiece, you are supposed to switch on this filament what? Balloon. Okay? The tajesen filament it should be lighting. Now, when it is lighting, and while you're looking through the eyepiece, okay? When you are looking through the eyepiece, you will be able to observe the two things, okay? You will be observing the light coming from the hot, I mean, you will be able to observe the light coming or the radiation coming from the source of what? Heat. And then it too, you will be able to also observe the light coming from the, the tajesen what? Filament. So you will be able to see both of them. Now, if, both, if you are able to see both of them, then it means that one of them is at a higher temperature than the other. So you, your, your point of interest is simply the brightness of those two. The brightness of the source of heat and then the brightness of the Tajesen what? Filament. Okay? Now, what you are supposed to do with the raw start? Now you can adjust the raw start slowly either decreasing or increasing the resistance until the brightness of the tajesen filament is it is it is just as if it is now the same as the brightness of that source of what heat so you adjust the raw start until there's no difference between the brightness of the tajesen filament and the brightness of the hot what source or of the source of what heat and once they are at the same brightness that's the tajesen filament and the source of heat then we say that they are at the same what temperature so you find that the ammeter this ammeter can be calibrated to give direct temperature reading once the brightness of the tajesen filament is the same as the brightness of the source of what heat but remember the th the raw start is the one which plays that role of adjusting the brightness of the filament so that it is the same as the brightness of the hot what of the source of heat like that so 
that's why they are the first step they are saying the body whose temperature is to be found is focused by the lens so that its image is in the plane of the filament okay they should be in the in the same plane so don't draw your diagram anyhow without them coinciding that's the filament and the image of the hot watch body then it too light from both the hot body and the filament passes through the red filter before reaching the what the eye i have told you the reason why we use that red what filter okay then after that we are saying the rheostat is adjusted so that the brightness of the filament is the same as that of the radiation emitted by the hot what the hot body okay then after that we are saying the temperature of the hot body is then read from the ammeter calibrated to measure the temperature in what in kelvins so that is how that is how that is how an optical pyrometer works okay Yes, is there any question as far as an optical pyrometer is concerned? Yes. Is it okay? Not Have I explained well? Yes. Okay, fine. So okay. So that is how simply how an optical optical pyrometer works and that's how it looks like so you'll